Hey there! Today is April 8th of 2020 and today is Wednesday of Holy Week. Alright, so let's start out with our general prayer for evening. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I've done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, now let's do our prayer for Wednesday. Lord Jesus, gracious Savior, I come to you in this sacred week to ponder upon your great and wondrous love. Love that led you to the cross, that my sin might be blotted out, that I might be reconciled to my heavenly Father. O Christ, give me strength and grace to crucify my sinful desires and dedicate myself anew to you, who has loved me with an everlasting love and brought me to eternal salvation. I confess to you my sins. There are many, and you know them all. For each and every one of them, you suffered the agony of the cross and shed your precious blood that I might be cleansed and made acceptable in your sight. Let me not go through this day unmindful of your great love. Let none of the sins of yesterday cling to me. Humbly I come seeking your mercy. Daily let me fulfill the tasks and duties to which you have called me with joy, confessing you as my Lord and Savior and being of service to my neighbor. Grant that your suffering and death proclaimed for that salvation of mankind may by the power of the Holy Spirit awaken in many a deeper love for you. O Lord, have mercy upon me and all sinful mankind and create in me all that seek you a clean heart, holy desires, and an undying love. Hear my prayer, gracious Redeemer. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, so today our story is out of Matthew. Historically, within the church tradition, there isn't something defined that happens on Wednesday, but it's very, it's traditional that you talk about the parable of the ten virgins that Jesus gave. So let's go ahead and read that. That's Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all of those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers, and buy for yourselves. And when they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterwards the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know ne neither the day nor the hour. The theme of this parable is to be prepared. The women of the story had gone out of their normal lives to wait for the bridegroom. Waiting for the bridegroom is often seen as waiting for Christ's return by living a life how the Bible asks us to live. So what our responsibility is, if since we are waiting for the bridegroom as well, we need to continue to show Jesus' love by loving God, loving our neighbor, repenting of our sins, and doing the work of the church. <clears throat> this passage also ends by reminding us that we don't know when Jesus is going to return. Nobody knows the day or the time. We have to continuously be looking like, really, we just need to continuously be doing the right thing and following God's law. And that was what is going to keep our lamps filled with oil. All right, so let's follow up by doing the Apostles' Creed in English and then in German. And we do it in English because we speak English and we do it in German because Martin Luther translated it so the German people would be able to know what they were saying. And that's important because it's important to remember that it was important to Martin Luther because it's important for Christians all around the world to know that they have a personal relationship with Jesus and that he's meeting them where they're at. He's speaking their language to them. All right, let's go. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right. Now in German. Ich glaube an Gott, den Vater, den Allmächtigen, den Schöpfer des Himmels und der Erde, und an Jesus Christus, seinen eingeborenen Sohn, unseren Herrn, empfangen durch den Heiligen Geist, geboren von der Jungfrau Maria, gelitten unter Pontius Pilatus, gekreuzigt, gestorben und begraben, hinabgestiegen in das Reich des Todes, am dritten Tage auferstanden von den Toten, aufgefahren in den Himmel, er sitzt du rechten Gottes, des allmächtigen Vaters. Von dort wird er kommen. Sie richten die Lebenden und die Toten. Ich glaube an den Heiligen Geist, die heilige christliche Kirche, Gemeinschaft der Heiligen, Vergebung der Sünden, Auferstehung der Toten und das ewige Leben. Amen. All right. See you on Monday, Thursday. Hello boys and girls, it's me, Captain Cool, here with a daily lesson this week, Easter week. First, let's begin with our cheers. You know this one. Who are we? God's are me. What's our task? Anything he asks. Now you can do that one again at home, but the second cheer I have, you may have never heard this, so you'll have to practice. Jesus is his name. Salvation is his aim. Jesus is his name. Salvation is his aim. Yay! Today's lesson, it states in the Bible about the ten bridesmaids. You know what a bridesmaid is. She's a beautiful bride waiting for the groom. Well, in this story, there were five wise bridesmaids and five foolish bridesmaids. The five wise bridesmaids took extra oil for their lamps so their light would bright, burn bright. The five foolish ones did not take extra oil. Now as the story goes, everybody fell asleep because it took so long for the bridegroom to come. <laughs> Well, then they shouted, the bridegroom is here. The wise bridesmaids jumped up and they had plenty of oil, but the foolish ones did not. And they were told to go and find and buy some extra oil. So they left. Well, by that time, the groom had showed up and they went into the wedding feast and they shut the door. When the foolish bridesmaids returned, they were not allowed in. Now that would be like us today, that if we went out, remember we have to have hand sanitizer. What if we went out and didn't have any hand sanitizer? See, that would be foolish. So let me give you some wise and foolish questions and you have to answer them if they're wise or foolish. Would it be wise or foolish to cross the street without looking for cars? That would be foolish. Looking both ways before crossing the street would be wise. How about studying the Bible regularly? Wise. How about saving part of your allowance for future needs? Wise. How about praying only when we want something? Foolish. So you see how it goes. We must be wise in waiting for Jesus to return. He is the bridegroom. Have a blessed day because pray, pray, God is on the only way.